We're here because we're going to talk about the love experiment, episode six, okay? The Hall of No Regrets. All right, so y'all know I've been reviewing this show. Um, this is the first season. I actually like it. In every episode, there's a new element that's introduced that I'm like, this is great. So this episode is going to be... Um, the girls are going to go back into the Hall of, of No Regrets. Yeah, the Hall of No Regrets. And they're going to see guys that were in there previously that they may have stopped to look at or people that they've actually chosen and then eliminated. Okay. So, but mind you, Mars has two, uh, Mars has three people. Tamara has three people, but Paige only has Justin. She only has one person. So it's going to be easy for her to just go pick, you know, some people to come back to make her final three. Um, but if Mars and Tamara pick somebody, they got to let somebody go. Okay. So when I figured out what was going to be going on in the Hall of No Regrets, I was like, Kenny's ass better not be in there. Like, why would they put Kenny back in there? But they did. Um, so that fucking really happened. So last episode, you know, they had the romantic getaway. And so they had a chance to eliminate guys after the romantic getaway. Tamara chose to keep Jamal. Mars chose to keep Ishan, which I did not understand because I was just getting friend vibes from that. And it's like, if you know you're going to be able to go back into the hall, possibly, or even if you weren't, why would you pick somebody that you know you're not romantically connected to? So, um, but she, Mars kept Ishan and then uh, Paige got rid of Chris because, because Chris's view on the hierarchy in the household didn't sit right with her. So she was like, uh-uh, he got to go, right? So at the get together, when they're reuniting with guys that stay, she Paige is talking to Justin, right? And so this question of the household hierarchy comes up again. And so now I'm like, at first I was like, okay, I don't know where that all came from. And maybe there was something else that she really felt about Chris. That's the reason why she got rid of him. But seeing her ask Justin, either she's playing and she's gonna ask everybody and rule them out on this one rule or she really like cares about their view on that right so she asked justin justin got the right answer he said we're a team and um my it's not what i say goes so he he looks at it as more of like a collaboration and so that was the right answer that she was looking for so she's you know more close with Justin now. Now, the crazy thing is, okay, she's actually getting to know Justin a lot better than the other girls are probably getting to know the other guys because they're entertaining three guys. So imagine if they were more, right? So anyway, so she only has her one person. Mars has three people and Tamara has three people. Okay, so the hall reopens, okay? This is the part I was waiting for because I'm like, who is in the hall? Okay, so first I want to say that the one guy that's the pastor, I think he was the oldest out of the group. He looked like he really could have had some substance right i mean not the fact that he's a pastor but the fact that he was just kind of real about you know yeah i am a pastor but i curse too you know like he probably would have been on some grown man i'm thinking right he was married before or whatever so i wish somebody would have picked him so we could have like just seen how he would have been in the process and how he would have been competing with these other guys because we're gonna see in a minute that some of these guys can't handle their liquor and they can't handle the social uh, part of dating uh, multiple men, dating one woman, dating the same woman. So this time when they go into the hall, the men take the earpieces out. So previously, you know, they go in, the men have the earpieces in so the ladies can't um, be heard. Like, so they can't hear the conversations that the ladies are having. But right now, since they're going in the hall, one by one alone, right? They can't even go in as a group. The men are taking out their earpieces and the women can talk. But the caveat to that is that <laughs> all the other men can hear your conversation too. So that had to be kind of funny. Then I see Kenny's ass. <sighs> I don't even know why they brought him back in there. He just showed his ass the first time and he definitely showed his ass this time too. So when Tamara goes up to Kenny, she's like, oh my God, you know, she's trying to talk to him or whatever. Uh, well, she wasn't really trying to talk to him, but she kind of just stood in front of him or whatever. And he... He at first was kind of like, yeah, I'm back or whatever. But then he was like, you know, I'm unsure about this whole thing. And she's like, so you don't even know if you really want to be here. And he's like, you know, I'm just being real and this, that, and the other. He was being, you know, um, what is the word? It's not, it's not asshole, but it's, um, damn, I can't remember what the word is, but he just wasn't being cooperative like if you are unsure then you probably should have told them let me just go ahead and let y'all pick somebody else so i don't even have to take up a space in the hall of no regrets like 
I don't know. Maybe he didn't have that choice. But the look that Tamara gave him as she walked off was like, she wanted to say something or she like, she was irritated. Like this dude, I could tell anyway. So then of course, Chris is in there having just been eliminated like the previous episode, which I don't know what the time frame was as far as like when they opened up the hall, maybe it was within the day or whatever, but he was in there. He pulls Paige to the side into his little uh, cubicle or whatever. And he, you know, tells her that he, he's kind of saying that he had a change of mind. He doesn't really think what he said at the table the at, over at the romantic getaway. Now, Paige is like, you cannot change your mind overnight like that, blase blah. And so, but he's still trying to get chose. He did apologize though. So, you know, that was kudos to him for that. So the girls meet outside of the hall and they discuss who's in the hall. And like one of the girls, I think Paige was like telling Tamara that she needed to um, pick Mike. Now, if you watching this along with me, Mike was in episode one. They had that first, that was that first date where they had, they realized that they were going to get texts to their phone to tell them that the hall is going to reopen and then they could eliminate the person they were on a date with and go back and pick somebody else. She, that was the one where she walked into production and was like, what? I gotta, I don't want to do this and all of that. He had like, um, the little, uh, haircut with the locks up top. Anyway, Mike, you know, when you looked at them, see each other, when the Hall of No Regrets opened, I did see a little spark and I was like, oh, they are cute together, right? But as he joined the cast again, he does too much. Mike plays too much. That's the end of it. He plays too much. I'm going to tell y'all a couple of things that he was doing because he j it's just the bottom line is he plays too much. Okay. He plays way too much. So, okay. Before, before we get there though, um, they meet outside and they talk about the guys that were in there and then they go back in to make their choice. Right? So the next morning, the girls are talking cause they're about to have to do an elimination, right? Well, yeah, they're about to have to do an elimination because all of them pick somebody, right? So except for Paige, Paige is not going to have to eliminate anybody, but Mars and Tamara have to eliminate somebody. So they're all talking or whatever. But um, Ryan, the one who looks like a grown Macaulay Culkin, he comes to bring Tamara breakfast in bed. And he, uh, hand, he brought a handwritten note that he had like drew a phone around because she had pulled him to the side uh, previously and said, you don't text me, you don't call me, you know. Um, and so he said, instead of calling, I'm going to come to you. And he drew a phone with a handwritten note to try to show her that he, you know, is into her. Um, but anyway, it's the day of elimination, right? So, uh, Tamara has to figure out who she's going to let go. And Mars has to figure out who she's going to let go because they're bringing new guys in. Okay. So Mars goes to talk to her connections and she ends up cutting Ishan, which, yeah, we knew that there's, there's nothing there, right? So she cuts him, um, and I can't remember who she brings back, but she brings back somebody she already eliminated, okay? And so I will uh, put the name right here because as I'm filming this, I cannot remember who it was that Mars brought back. So Tamara goes and talks to her connections and she sends Ryan home. Even though he wrote the handwritten note, it was a little too late, right? But also, he wasn't ready for Tamara. So it, he needed to go. He needed to go. Now, Tamara brought back Mike. Mike was the first one that she had to date with. And they had great chemistry when they, when they, when I saw them, when, when they reunited, right? But she brings her connections together and they're at a hookah lounge, they're on a date or whatever. So she's trying to, you know, have a date with these multiple guys or whatever. Jamal sitting beside her, Mike sitting across from them and her other connection is sitting beside him. So... They're all talking and stuff, and Mike is just doing too much. He's making faces. He's talking about, you know, hop on pop, referring to himself. He's mimicking the other dudes. I don't know if it was the alcohol or if that's just him, but it was really aggravating, like really aggravating. And Tamara was irritated by it as well. Paige went to like a nursery. Well, I don't want to call it a nursery, but it was a place with a whole bunch of plants. She went with her dates there. And Justin was kind of not really engaging like he usually does. But her new guy, she picked um, Nikoi, 
Yes, her new guy, McCoy, was all into the plants because he's a plant dad and they made a connection. I think stuff like that, Justin seems like he gets intimidated when he can see her connecting with someone else. So, um, but yeah, it was. It looked like it was a cute little date. And so Mars is back at the place and uh, the men are cooking dinner, right? And she was a little tense or whatever and Yannick came over and rubbed her back. And then they stepped outside. While they were outside, he ended up giving her a kiss. And when they broke from the kiss, Chuck was standing right there telling them that dinner was ready. And I was like, okay, that is awkward. As I mean, on both sides, being the woman or being the man, it's just awkward. But Chuck said, it's just a kiss. He ain't tripping, you know, whatever. But it, the whole scene was awkward. So after the dates, the girls go over and they want to spend some more time with the guys. And so, you know, they're all, you know, greeting each other. And I feel like I heard Tam say that Mike grabbed her butt when he hugged her, which is crazy, but he just got back. And so he's been drinking. And so he was already in rare form earlier and it's just gonna get worse at this point, okay? Mike is sipping and tripping, all right? It's like, he's gone. Like he's making the other guys feel uncomfortable. Josiah said he was feeling uncomfortable. So Josiah and Tamara go off to talk to the side. Anyway, in comes Mike at some point, um, coming down here with his drunk ass. He was a puddle, okay? He was just tipsy to the 10th degree, okay? So he's like making, um, He's making comments like he didn't want to beat nobody up and things like that to the point where Tamara couldn't even eat her food and felt so uncomfortable she had to call Paige down there. So the whole group comes down there and it's just like this, uh, like it looks like an intervention. At one point, Josiah was standing here and Isaac was standing here and Mike walked through them two and did his arms like this and pushed both of them. He was just getting out of control. So Tam even tries to pull Mike aside and talk to him about his behavior, but it was just like, she was talking to him about being possessive. Like he kept talking about, you know, she's mine and this, that, and the other. And, you know, he just kept making those comments. And so even with her talking to him one-on-one, -on -one, he was just being an asshole. So I was just like, wow, I really thought that they had a little spark and it was like a little chemistry there, but uh, he just got real comfortable and started like, I guess showing his real self. It could have been the liquor, you know what I'm saying? But they say, you know what I'm saying? That's when the truth comes out. So I, but anyway, that's it for this episode. Next week is the next element that I'm saying that they're adding that made me be like, oh my God, that's a great idea. The girls get to go into the hall of reality. What is that you may ask? Well, they'll get to go into the hall and talk to the friends and family members of the connections that they picked. That's bomb right there. That's, I mean, come on. That is a great element. You got to admit. So next episode, they're going to come down to the final two. All right. So uh, this should be very interesting. If you're watching the show, comment below. Let me know what you think. Make sure you subscribe, share the video, and come back and watch my other shows that I'm going to review too. Ready to Love uh, is my main one, but I'm adding some others as well. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.